All right, welcome. This is Shaggy Double N with me, a guest. Animagus Queen. Welcome to Parallel World Podcast, episode four. We got a lot of topics to talk about. I know it's been a while since we did a last our last podcast, but we're back with some more topics for you. And yeah, so you got a lot to say today, right? Yeah, we both do. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> you can... Um, in case you're wondering, you get you can you guys can find us at our Twitter pages. Mine's at Shaggy Double N, and then mine should be Raven Huntress ninety six or Animagus Queen. Okay, so if you want to like keep up to date with us and all that, you can. So, but yeah, we're gonna get right into it. Parallel podcast, Parallel World podcast, episode four. Um, our main topics we're gonna discuss is characters in comics that need a show. Or need a movie. And characters that haven't gotten a movie or a TV show yet that could work. Or storylines and comics that haven't been adapted yet that could be a show or a movie. And where they fit best. like Such as Netflix or Hulu or HBO or you know AMC, whatever. You know, the CW, whatever. So we're going to get into that. So... We got, I got my list of characters that I'd want, and then... I have my own list. <laughs> yeah, you got yours, so... And we have um, some characters, I think only one out of my list. Actually, a couple that have had a movie, but I believe they could... Fix it up. Or, yeah, fix yeah, it up. Yeah, like it try better. it again. Yeah, so... We'll probably just go, um, I'll probably let him do, you know couple of his and discuss it with me and with you yeah, guys can go and then back. I can do mine. We can go back and forth too if you want. Yeah. So, um, all right. Yeah, I'll start with mine. The first one I think should be a show is Ninjak from Valiant. And the reason I say that, um, and I think he, I think he should be on Netflix too. But, you know, everybody puts everything on Netflix. But yeah. we got a lot of Netflix ones just because Netflix is the most, like, easy thing to put something on. Like, it, you know, they always do the, like, oh, we're going to do 12, show, 12 episodes and then 13 episodes of something and then we're going to end it. You know what I mean? And then maybe do a season two later. So, but yeah, Ninjak is my first one. And the reason for that is just because it, he works better as a show because... It gives him more time as the character to get more fleshed out and to have more character development. And Ninjax kind of fits into the category of like spy, you know, secret agent spy kind of TV show. So they can do a lot of stuff with like, you know, like the mob or, you know, like uh, getting caught by like gangsters or something like that or he has to spy on like high value targets like from different countries so each episode he could go to a different country or he could go on a different mission and take out a target or something like that and on netflix they can be as violent as they want ninja can get pretty violent i mean he's stabbing people and you know he straight up kills people so i think he'd fit well on there and then on Netflix, they can also do, like, kind of like what Marvel does with their characters. They can, like, throw little Easter eggs in there, like, oh, there's a little reference to another character or something like that. So gives it more time. We can learn about his origin. We can learn about, we can see his suit, how he got his suit, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah, that's my number one. So I'm going to let Sarah go with hers. I'm going to start with Black Magic. All right. Because I'm obsessed with the book <laughs> or the comics. And um, I believe it could be turned into a TV show on Netflix because it has so much like um, if any anybody knows me, they know I loved anything with witches and with people who are more modern. You know, and what is black magic? Black if, magic. For the people that don't know. Yeah, well, I'm going to get there. Um, It's like, it's it'll be kind of like the charm show, that, but it, obviously it's black magic and it's about it. I'm not going to give too much information. I'm just going to tell you guys to go pick it up. It's by image. And um, it's about a character who is a police officer and she obviously can do a lot of different 
kind of um, magic abilities and has a lot of potions and there's a lot of conflicts with her relationships with everybody. Um, a lot of, you know, negative entities um, and people who are coming after her and trying to, you know, hurt her coven and hurt a lot of of the people that she loves. And it's just very dark, wicked, and I'm very obsessed with it, especially the main character because she has a lot of, you know, very deep issues that can be portrayed in the show and a lot of cool stuff they can put in it, like a lot of demons, a lot of, you know, um, warlocks, a lot of monsters, a lot of creepy stuff. And that's kind of something I would love to see them put on the TV screen for people is for people like me who love that creepy horror, but, you know, family related show that they can combine all together and make someone obsessed with. So that's something I'd love to see. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's good because Image needs to put more of their stories out there. Yeah, being you know? well more known. Yeah, I mean they've done they've dabbled a little bit. You know, I mean obviously Walking Dead's gotten a show, and that's from Image, and um, the, you know there there are a few other things that got adapted here and there, like some of Mark Miller's stuff. But uh, since we were on the topic of Netflix, actually Mark Miller like signed a deal with Netflix and made like. A deal to where he can make his comics mm-hmm. into shows now like uh you know like kick-ass wanted he, you know he made all those he made um empress he made um uh what was that other one it was like mph which was a really good book um but he, you know you can look up all his stuff he, he's the guy who did civil war and like old man logan and stuff but he has his own like line of books but you know so I didn't want to put that on the list just because, like, we're getting those shows on Netflix eventually. And another thing about Black Magic, too, is they're not just basing off how they believe witches from the past were or how they are now in modern day. They're actually taking stuff from the history and putting it into the books, like the symbolizations and everything of, you know, of the actual dark magic people used to produce or used to try to think or do, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's something really cool because they have artwork in the back of the books like everybody else, but they go in depth with what the symbols mean in the book. They go in depth with different kind of covens, and it's it's very cool and different. So. And she's a detective as well, too. Yeah. So that's, you know, dealing with murder cases and whatnot. So that fits perfectly on Netflix. Netflix has done a lot of police and detective shows mm-hmm. and you know it's Netflix isn't afraid to get dark and serious with their stuff so exactly fits well on there so uh and you know going with the like dark and messed up tone of you know shows my next choice would be Nailbiter yes and another image series that actually ended recently about i think it was last year it ended yeah, I think last year it ended, but that's a really good series and has a lot of potential to be a Netflix show just because it's very, um, it's a different take on like the serial killer uh, genre and it's kind of like a, the whole premise and question of it is a bunch of serial killers are born in one town and people don't know why. And a show and a premise like that has a lot of potential because they can do the 13 episode or 12 episode routine and adapt that whole series very Mm -hmm. well. Or, you know, if they want to make it a little longer, they could do a season two, but don't make it any longer than two seasons. Yeah, they could do a lot too because of the amount of different types of serial killers they have in that town. Yeah. They have all different storylines. So like every show could be... Each episode could be about a new killer. Yeah, new connection. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's... cool characters in there and like there's the nail biter himself is an actual character (laughs) and he's you know he's he's funny and stuff so you know they could get a funny actor but he has problems and you know like you feel bad for him sometimes but then you shouldn't because he he killed people so you kind of don't know you kind of have like a mixed conflicted feelings about him so they'd have to find the right actor for him and all that um but yeah you know it, it could work perfectly like I, I just love how Netflix does their little routine of shows where they're just they'll st- they'll start out slow and then they'll build up to it and then at the end it'll get real good you know maybe in the middle it gets a little slow but they have that rhythm you know what I mean like 
of show of watching a show like when you binge watch exactly so um and yeah the, the show can get really dark because the book is dark and the book was only like six volumes so they could tell that story within a season or two and be done with it and that's it so that would make a good little like netflix original show so that's my number two good one um my number two would probably be saga and it's probably one of my favorite books and we're still we're still waiting on the third omnibus but um that got canceled for a while so but it's basically a book just a movie yeah yeah i want it to be turned into a movie because it's just like all this crazy like stuff just all in one you know you have all these different creatures you have all these different rules and all these different um stories and it's just all so intense um funny and like it just all makes sense to how our galaxy would be if we were all in different species and just trying to get along and you know the whole racism thing and then you've got the the bad people the good people and obviously like the babies that aren't that aren't supposed to be born because of the rules so it's just it's all crazy it, it is very weird and crazy it's all, you know yeah like, everywhere it's kind of like if you took a bunch of acid and then just wanted to create a comic Mm-hmm. that's what saga is um i'm sure most <laughs> of you that are into image probably have heard or have read saga already so we probably don't have to go into much explanation it's one of the biggest like image books out there like one, the most popular um besides like walking dead of course it's probably like the second or third i'd put it like in top five most popular image yeah. series it's definitely up there um yeah so i it's just a wacky universe. Very it's amazing. People with TV heads and a lot of weird ass nudity in there. And, you know, it's, it gets really wacky. Um, you know, it's, if you want something that won't get you bored and will keep you like into the book, you got to read this. Like yeah. it just keeps you going. But how would a movie work? How would, how, you know, like, oh, a, they would be, it would, would be, it be like, like a two, three hour movie. Cause this, this would be a real tough movie to make. It'd probably be like a two hour movie. And then, um, kind of like Lord of the Freaking Rings, it'd probably be a two and a half hour movie, but it would be so good. You know what I mean? It'd be one of those movies that you'd Hopefully want them to grab the, right. yeah, you'd want them <laughs> to grab the right cast for it. You know, you'd want them to get the people who can actually do the parts of the characters. And it would just like, like he said, there's a lot of crazy sexual stuff in the book. There's a lot of crazy oh, yeah, complications make, with relationships. That, they'd have to make that movie rated R for yeah, sure. Yeah, for <laughs> real. But yeah. it's it's such a good book. It's not just about the the crazy sexual encounters or the crazy relationship issues or the crazy, yeah. you know, racism crap. It's it's like everywhere. It, it doesn't make you bored. It you know it really draws you in and I think having a movie would like a two and a half hour movie and then you know how many movies they make further on would really get people to understand what it's about if they're confused so yeah and as uh brian k vaughn said the author of the, the book he mm-hmm. um he said it's romeo and juliet in space yep that's all it is pretty so much all you got to do is take the idea of romeo and juliet which romeo and juliet has been done a thousand times in movies and you know books and whatever but put it in space and put all this wacky stuff in it so yeah and that's all you gotta do and brian k vaughn has also said he doesn't really want to see a saga movie personally but i feel like it's gonna happen eventually you know what i mean because it's know, getting so popular because you know hollywood and they can't think of anything new they gotta take ideas from stuff and put it into movies but yeah so that's your number two? Yes. All right, my number three. I want to see, uh, sticking on the topic of image, I want to see a DMZ show. Um, where do I start with this? DMZ is a, it's a Vertigo series, and for people who haven't heard of Vertigo... It's actually DC owns Vertigo. Vertigo was like the subgenre, like the subsection of like their comic line. And what Vertigo was was kind of like at the time DC's way of like separating stories in a 
and not putting it in the DC universe, like, you know, with Batman and Superman. It was a separate thing, but DC owned it still. Mm -hmm. So, or they published whatever. Um, And basically, uh, Vertigo also had Sandman in it and, you know, a whole bunch of different ideas, like Transmetropolitan and, you know, DMZ. And uh, there was other ones. I think there was, um, I think it was like Last uh, or Scalped. Well, that might have been image, but there are you know Sandman. Obviously, people know who Sandman is. Um, Vertigo had a lot of cool ideas. Um, I don't think Vert- Vertigo might still technically be around, but DC kind of just don't really talk about them anymore. But DMZ would make a good show. I think they were trying to make it on Sci-Fi at some point. Um, but I don't know if it's still being made or not, or if it got canceled or whatever. But uh, I think DMZ, a perfect time to make DMZ because of the, it's very political. I'm not very a political person, but obviously nowadays the world's very political and there's a lot of crap going on in the world, you know, not just in the United States, but all over the place. But mostly this book takes place in New York City, as do other many different things take place in New York City. Um, the whole premise is basically the... Um, New York City is quarantined, and quarantine meaning everything's locked up. No one can get in or out. And the story's about a reporter who has to go in and film everything and get evidence of what's going on in there. Like, a lot of bad stuff's going on. Like, people are getting killed, and, you know, there's gangs and stuff, and, you know, politics get involved. And it would make a good show, probably for, like, a good, like, good four seasons maybe four or five seasons at the most um i have that whole series and it was just really good um there's good characters in there too um and it, the, the show could also help deal with a lot of topics like with like racism and problems with politics and you know gang violence uh like shooting problems like it could cover a lot of topics um i don't know if they'd want to do that because it's a sensitive world today and people might get offended by it (laughs) but you know uh i think that show has the potential to keep it very real and very realistic um and it's just i think you know like i think maybe netflix well maybe even hulu could do it because hulu could use something like that, I think. They could have that one show. So, yeah. If, if you're And there's a lot of soldier stuff in there, so it can cover a lot of soldier topics, too. Like, they cover, like, PTSD and, you know, soldiers that come home from war, you know, like, lose their families and stuff. It's, it's really good. And, like, the character can grow, and depending on the cast they get, you know, character can become older as the show goes on. And because that... In New York City, it went on for like a few years, that whole war and stuff. So, yeah, that's my number three for TV show idea. Hmm. You're number three. Um, I'd probably go with Superman Rebirth, like the Rebirth storyline. Um, because to me, that was amazing. <laughs> it was an amazing book. Um, and I loved how different it was. And, you know, they always do the the basic Superman films with the same storylines and Lex with the kryptonite. Or yeah, something, yeah. This was just <laughs> totally different. It was all crazy. I'm not going to get in depth with it. Cause it'd be too easy just to tell you guys exactly what the story is about. And, but it, let's just say it's not just about one <laughs> Clark. You want this as an animated movie, right? Yeah. Either animated movie or a movie, but they have to do it correctly Yeah, because this isn't just about one Clark. This is about many And it's about basically taking place, someone else's place in order to keep the world in, in check. It's about, you know, family. It's about, um, he has a son and and it's, it's crazy because, you know, when I always thought about them, like making some, or giving him, him a son, it would be just, oh, you know, same old, same old, you know, son that acts just like Clark, you know, like perfect in every way. 
but it isn't like that. It goes more in depth with, like, his son has his own personal issues, and his son, it, it takes him a while to, um, gain the ab- ability Superman has, and it takes, um, you know, everybody in the family to, like, take roles of the same person they are, but just how different the, you know, they were in the other, um, I see, I don't know how to say it without telling the whole story. Yeah. But it's, mean, it's really good. It's a different storyline. It's, you know, I'm just going to basically wrap it up and say it's, um, you know, Clark's family. You get to see Clark as like a father and you get to yeah. see Lois as a mother. And then take them taking their other self's places in order to keep everything going, you know. So it's, you just got to read it to understand it. And it's like, it's different too. You see, very Le- different. You see, Lex is like a good guy. Yeah, it's really weird. Lex and Superman have a complicated relationship. There's two Clarks for a while, and there's two Loises, and mm-hmm. you got to figure out what the hell's going on with that. You know, so they can make it like a mystery there for a while. Yeah, definitely. Um, and there's like a lot of questioning with the people that know the person. They'll be like, "Wait, you're not acting like the Lois I know. Like you're yeah. kind of different. Like, and it and it is different because they all, you know." Both Loises have different haircuts, hairstyles. Both Clarks are totally different, you know, yeah. obviously. One and it's doesn't like, have powers. Yeah, yeah they got to take that role because the other one's gone. So you got to understand. You got to read it and get into it. And it's, it would make a perfect movie because of that storyline. And it would make we never people seen understand something different than the just regular Superman films that we always watch. And then another one I would like to see is a Red Sun movie. So an animated film, but like, or, a, you know... Live action. Yeah, we all want to see a Red Sun. Yeah, yeah, so that would be pretty cool. That one should have been done a long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah, but I think they might get to it eventually. Probably, like, after the Hush movie or whatever. Um, yeah, I agree with Rebirth. Um, we never see, like, Superman portrayed in movies or show, like, as his father. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's cool to see him as a father and struggling to figure out how to teach his son how to be the next Superman or be good and how to use his powers correctly and how to not lose control of his powers and how to learn how to fly and use heat vision and all that. Cause you know, he, he's like a hybrid. He's a human Kryptonian hybrid. So he doesn't really know how to deal with that. So it, it's, you know, it's good to see that stuff. So um, and it, there's also like a huge twist to it too. Like, you know how superheroes have their kids and always want them to follow that line. Yeah. But in this book, it's more about him trying to teach his son, like, you choose your own path. You don't have to be Superman. You could be this person, too. You don't have to do both. You can just be a regular person just controlling your powers, hidden in disguise. Or you could be, like, kind of like what he's doing, you know, doing Superman and working. So it's kind of like that whole teaching him how to find himself and not just follow in his father's footsteps. Right, yeah. So... Um, and also the villains are great too. Yeah, they are. Um, you know, Lex isn't a villain, but you know, he, they start out as a disagreement, then work it out. But, uh, you know, they bring back the Eradicator and then they bring back like Cyborg Superman, mm-hmm. and, you know, they bring back, uh, Metallo. Um, you know, they come back and there's a whole storyline with them without spoiling it. Uh, you know, Zod comes back. Um, pretty much all the classic Superman, big Superman villains. Um, there's also like huge fight sequence with that. And there's a storyline I like with, um, my favorite storyline is, um, Apocalypse soldiers coming down looking for Lex because at the time of rebirth, Lex was supposed to take the place of dark side yeah. and become the ruler of apocalypse. Um, and they came, basically they came down because Lex, they saw a, a premonition of the future. Lex was going to become the leader of Apocalypse and basically destroy everything in the galaxy. And they foresaw it. Um, and they go back in time to try to kill him so that they prevent it from happening. And, you know, obviously Lex doesn't know what the hell's going on. You know, he's like, something's, you know, this isn't right. And then there's a whole, I like the whole conflict of like, Superman and Lex teaming up to like, because Clark kind of defends him, you know, because he doesn't want to see him be accused of something he didn't do. Mm-hmm. And then there's that whole argument of like, oh, well, he's going to do it. You know, we got to kill him now before he does it. But he's like, oh, but you're 
killing an innocent man, technically. He didn't do anything yet, so. See, I like that storyline, too, because it's, you know, it's it's also about, like... You never the, see Lex and Superman team up, really. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. and you they give you more in-depth with, like, about the characters who are trying to come get Lex Luthor to prevent the, you know, galaxy being destroyed by him. They show, like, more, you know, why these people want to prevent it and why these people are who they are. Yeah. They're not just bad people coming to, you know, fuck shit up. They're trying to prevent, like, a huge, like, war, massacre. War so, and destruction. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's more of that. And it, you guys just have to read it because, you know, Superman also has a really awesome um, outfit in the book that has amazing, like, sketches of them creating his outfit. And you guys just have to go and um, yeah, read Le- it. Lex has uh, got a new suit, too. Yeah, it looks really cool. He's I got love armor, it. armor thing, yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, there's... It's it can, it's a little confusing because the rebirth stuff. There's there's a Superman series of rebirths, and then there's action comics, and we're talking about action comics because those are the good storylines. Yep. But the, you know the regular Superman storylines, those are good. Um, one of my favorite Superman villains comes back in Manchester Black. He's my favorite. Um, I like how they brought him back. So, you know, go ahead and read that. Um, we do want to see that. As a animated movie, or do we want to see this as a show? Or? It would like it would be cool for them to do an animated film because you know DC can't go wrong that, with animated films unless they do part one, part two. Yeah. yeah, you know if they do live action, a TV show or whatever, they'd really have to get the right cast for it because this is the kind of book you want to see come to life into the show. Like you want to see it. Like yeah. So they would really have to take their time out and choose the right actors and actresses. So. That's something we'd like to see. And if you guys want to also read another Rebirth comic, also try Supergirl. That could also be turned into an animated film. Oh, Superwoman. Or Superwoman. Yeah, Superwoman. Um, think about Supergirl because we're watching Supergirl right now. Yeah. But um, the Superwoman books are also super good. So um, I'm not going to get in depth with that right now. I'll probably like do a, another podcast with him about those like, the tie- CW shows. Those tie in with all the... Uh, yeah. Rebirth things it's too. very, very good storylines. So just putting it out there. Yeah. But let's go to his next one. Yeah, uh, I am on my fourth one. Yes. Okay. Uh, my fourth one. Uh, I'd like to see a Exo Manowar movie, and the reason I want to see that is well, you've seen our last podcast of why we love Valiant so much. Uh, the whole reason for a movie. Well, they could do a few movies of Exo Man. They could do like at least a trilogy, you know, three movies. Yeah. Um, Exo Man War could work as a movie just because the main reason is because like his suit would need a lot of special effects. You know what I mean? A lot of it. Yeah, and a TV show couldn't really isn't really the best way to portray his special effects because his suit is like moving and it swirls around and it wraps around his body and it like, you know, it looks all, it, it would look really CGI and animated. So they need like a big budget and a lot of money to animate that stuff. And, a, you know, a TV show, the you know, if you ever watch a TV show and they try to animate something, it looks a little fake. Yeah. It looks a little cheesy looking, but in a movie it looks a little better because they have more money. So plus Exo Man of War, you know, like a movie, you know, like, the the effects of him going into space and the the fights he could do fighting like the armor hunters or you know fighting uh the vine uh and you need effects to for the vine or I don't want to see them like animated I want to see the vine like CGI I want to see them like practical effects where they actually dress people up and paint yeah that'd as, be cool. as the vine you know what I'm saying because that would just look a lot better make them look more realistic. I think, like, Exo Manowar is, like, one of the, one fan, is he's, like, one of the first fan favorites in Valiant because of all that. He's, like, the flagship character. He's, like, the main, one of the main characters in Valiant. Like, Mm -hmm. like he's, like, he's kind of, like, the Spider-Man, like, you know, Spider-Man is, like, Marvel's big character, and, like, DC's got Batman, that's their big character. Exo Manowar is, like, their main big character, you know what I mean? He's, He's the main one. Um, some people might argue, oh, Bloodshot's the main one. I'm like, oh, Exo, he's a little bit more... More known. Yeah, like... There's a couple of the characters in Valiant that are, like... Yeah, Bloodshot... Everybody knows yeah. them, but... Yeah, like, Bloodshot and Exo, they're, like, they're... In terms of popularity, you know... Yeah, like, someone's, like, a little bit higher, but, mm-hmm. you know, Bloodshot's, like... 
he's right there too, you know. But and you know he's getting his own movie too. Finally, Bloodshot. Um. So I and yeah, I want to see actually after that Bloodshot movie, I do want to see them eventually do Exo Man War. Uh, cause I, they need to not make the mistake of what DC is doing. They need to, if they're going to be setting up this movie universe, yep. they need to get this right and they need to do it slowly. You know what I mean? They, they, they cannot rush this. They cannot throw a bunch of random ass characters in this one movie and say, oh, oh the universe is set up cause people aren't going to know what the hell is going on. You know what I mean? People aren't going to like, oh, throw an inject in there and throw a bloodshot in there and just have them all fight and like, okay. You're going way too fast. Give each character a movie, you know, and then at the, you know, do what Marvel does at the end of the credits, set something up, exactly. you know, throw a little teaser at the end. Like, oh, look, at the end of the Exo Man of War movie, all you got to do is like do after the credits, show a little scene of like, like a, a bank vault or something or like a, you know, a, a gangster meeting, you know, some random gangsters having a meeting. And then all you got to show is, you know fucking smoke and then you know a bunch of slashing and slashing and you know gunshots going off and then all you gotta see is or hear ninjack talking like mission complete and the credits they need yeah they need Boom. to take this you know you know slow. you know what i'm saying and then people look at the credits and be like oh ninjack's getting a movie in mm-hmm. like two years you know what i mean then sets it up slow you know exo got his movie and then do what marvel does set up the next movie don't rush it like DC, where DC's like, oh, we gotta throw, you know, Batman and Wonder Woman in here, and we gotta throw Flash in there, you know, like, don't, don't do that, because DC's a mess right now, so. Uh, Bloodshot movie coming up, get it right, take it slow, set up a sequel later, you know what I mean? Throw little references in there, you're good to go. I agree with just everything con- you're just con- my thing is just concentrate on the movie you're making now. Exactly. Okay, don't, don't worry about what you're doing in the future, because DC's like, Oh, we got to set up what we do in the future. You know, we got to, we can't just constantly, you know, like, oh, we're making a Superman movie. Oh, now, now we got to do a Batman, a Superman t- fighting, you know, like, okay, no. Have Superman movie, then do a Batman movie, then have Superman and Batman fight. You know what I mean? Give each character a movie before you cross them over. That's what you got to do. You can't just throw them in there without an explanation. You got to give them their spotlight and then explain who they are first. Because, you know, a lot of people, they, they people watch don't know, a lot of yeah. those movies and tv shows and they're they get like other they're, they're, oh, that's that's what the character is supposed to look like that's what they're supposed to be yeah. like and it's like uh, they just kind of did it super fascist to they, make they that just, character they sum it up no yeah. it's like it's like you yeah. got to take valiant seriously and slowly because valiant's super good we don't want them fucking up valiant because mm-hmm. that's like it's it's a different thing like we got dc and marvel obviously the hugest ones and then you've got Valiant and Image, which are very good and that need to make it up there. Hmm. But you can't just throw it out there just to make it up there because you're just going to mess it up. Yeah, there's, there's And there's so much, like, untapped potential. Mm-hmm. You know, like, there's just so many storylines, characters they have not shown yet. And I'm hoping with this Bloodshot movie, I'm just hoping that this movie does really well and people yeah. watch it and they're like, oh, okay, there's something here. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. I'm hooked. You know what I mean? You know, just do it slow, take your time, don't rush it, let it build up. And then in like, if you start, if you do it slow and build it up five years from now, we'll get like an awesome crossover movie, you know what I mean? And then people will know all the characters and be like, oh, okay, they're all in one movie together. Now I know who all they are because I saw each individual movie. Makes sense? Take notes, DC. Please. (laughs) It's, it's, you know, it's not bad to copy once in a while. You can copy a little bit, just... Okay, that's what competition's for, to see which one does better. Okay, that's our Valiant movie rant. Sorry about that. Yes, Exo Man or should get his own movie. So that was my number four. What is your number four? Mine is Faith. I'd like them to change it into a TV show. Um, with, you know, her being the first plus size, not the first, but you know what I'm talking about, like the, the actual plus size big girl with superhero powers, um... Yeah, she's and, a representation of, uh, you know, thick women out there. Yeah, she's, like, that one character that you look up at and, like, you're like, oh, wow, you you know, you, you've got your own, you know, personal issues and you've got your own, you know, what people would say nowadays, you've got your own weight issues. But she's really, really iconic because of her, you know, her, her ability to work super hard and to still 
put on an outfit and go out there and have that confidence and still do her job. And, and, you know, she's really iconic because of her confidence, because of her being overweight. And she's really iconic because like, she's such a nice person. She's not judgmental. She's not, you know, insecure. Um, oh yeah. She's also a nerd that makes a lot of references to like yeah. nerd culture too. Yeah. A lot of like very nerdy girl who, who doesn't have, um, she'll make like Harry Potter jokes or Dr. Who jokes and, you yeah, know, like, like stuff like that and be like, Oh, you know, like she'll run into somebody and be like, Oh, this is like that time in that episode of Star Trek or something. You know, she'll say like yeah. something like that, you know, she's just a really funny character and a very overpowering character that makes you like, it's like if they make a character, that's okay. Let's just make an example because a lot of people nowadays are very sensitive and, <laughs> You know, we'll Twitter. just say, yeah, like, we'll, we'll say, like, um, which I don't care what skin tone you are, or what you look like, as long as, you know, you got a really good character going, I don't care what it looks like. You could be an alien for all I care. And, um, the fact that they're making her such a powerful character because of her being so overweight and because of her different personality is amazing. And then you've got, like, you know, iconic African American characters, iconic alien characters, iconic Mexican characters. It doesn't matter what gender or what race you are, as long as you've got this thing going, you know, and this huge path going for you, I'm gonna be very into you. Yeah. Like your your character. And she's gonna be an amazing person in a show because young audiences that are dealing with obesity, middle aged women, older women, older men, middle aged men, young men who are dealing with you know, obesity. Or dealing with feeling like they can't come out of the box because of their weight or because they're just nerdy. Which, you know, nerd is very overrated because everybody had used that word back in the past. But nowadays it's cool if you're a nerd. But um, Now there's a superhero movie every week. <laughs> yeah, but this would be so cool for people that can't come out. People who are insecure. People who, you know, Open. look in the mirror and think they can't go do something because of how they look or because of their, their awkwardness. Like, come on. Like, this character would be so amazing. It's because a perfect of time how she to, is. yeah, perfect time for her to get a show. Yeah, I would love that. Plus, so. it op it opens up the Valiant universe more, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and again, a Valiant, you know, op open up that universe, take it slow. Do you have faith a show? Have a couple in the show have like a couple characters make a cameo, you know, maybe a couple Harbinger characters pop up in yeah, an episode cool. or two, you know, like Peter Stanchek shows up in an episode and helps her out, or maybe Tor, you know, because. They dated yep. for a while, maybe have him pop They'd up. They'd probably have him come in. in a yeah, way. yeah, you know, have like, you know, and then for the hardcore fans, it's like, hey, there's Tor, or, hey, there's Peter, you know what I mean? So, you know, obviously don't like put them in there too much, but just a couple little cameos, you know what I mean? Like for the fans, they're like, oh, hey, yeah, she was part of the Harbinger team, you know what I mean? She still kind of is. So do that too. So yeah, great. Um, I like that choice a lot because Faith is. She does need a TV show. Uh, my number five. I think I'm on number five, right? Yeah. Okay. My number five. Um, let's do a hack and slash TV show. That would be so cool. <laughs> and you know I love Cassie. Yeah, Cassie Hack. Um, a TV show. Okay, so this show would probably have to be. I mean, it's it's very yeah. Well, yeah, the show is definitely gonna be rated R. Uh, much like Nailbiter, and fun fact, actually, Nailbiter is actually in the same universe as mm -hmm. Hackslash. Just if you read the book, you'll find out she pops up in Nailbiter. Um, so, uh, yeah, Nailbiter, or not Nailbiter, uh, Hackslash is basically about a chick who fights all these, like, iconic, like, slasher movie villains, like Jason Voorhees. Chucky. And, yeah, Chucky. I mean, Jason didn't really technically pop in, but you could tell, like, some characters were based off of Jason. You know what I mean? And then she has a sidekick named Vlad, you know, that walks, her. yeah, he's just big, giant, like, zombie, Frankenstein-looking dude. Kind of looks like Jason, kind of has, like, a gas mask, and is huge and has a machete. You can tell he's, like, based off of Jason a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, That would be a cool show, just because it would be, like, funny, but, like, kind of fucked up to you know what i mean like there's a lot of dark humor too yeah and then you could have like funny stuff happen like chucky popping up and her fighting chucky and like you know it's it'd be cool to see like you know like oh instead of the slashers killing everybody we want to see someone fight back against the slashers you know what i mean and cassie hat can do that because mm -hmm. she just has her little baseball bat with her nails in it 
and she just like whoops their ass. She, she don't give a fuck. Yeah, and there's like a lot of like funny like sexualization. It's not like sexualization just to be sexual. It's like more of a funny sexualization where like oh, you know, like she you know, she was fighting and then her underwear fell off on accident or something and yeah. you know, it's funny, you know, and or oh, you know, like <laughs> It's, you know, like, they the way they could do that is just make it a joke and, you know, not make it, like... Or she'll go Oh, somewhere. yeah, oh, look at the boobs, just for looking at the boobs. You know, it could just be, like, oh, you know, her bra fell off and now she's pissed off because her bra fell off and then, you know, she'd hit a zombie in the head, like, what are you looking at? You know, or something like that. You know, they could do a lot of funny humor with it, so... Uh, Hack Slash would be, like, such a different show from anything else because it'd be, like, I don't know if you heard of Evil Dead... Yeah, I know. Evil Dead. It'd be like an Evil Dead mixed with like, like, uh, remember Shaun of the Dead? Mm-hmm. Remember that zombie show? Or not show, but, yeah. or Zombieland. Remember how or they Zombieland, made, yeah, yeah, Zombieland, like they, you know, they'd make fun of the zombies, but it was also serious. Yeah. But they joke around. And so she's yeah. Also, she's also bisexual. Yeah. Because, you know, she goes places. <laughs> She'll go places because there'll be like a, you know, slasher there. But she'll end up partying and making out with women or men and then ending up finding out, oh, that that was a slasher going after the person I like or I'm into right yeah. now sexually. It's like it, go, it goes more super like, funny, yeah. super funny, like sexual <laughs> humor, you know, dark humor. I just I love it. And, yeah. and especially Vlad's character. He's so big and like, you know, people, if they looked at him, they'd be like, oh, fuck, he's scary and, you know, bulky. But yeah. I think he's so cute. He's and, just like, misunderstood. Yeah. yeah, he's really cool. So <laughs> you guys got to got to read the um, hack and slash books and then you'll understand why you want to make it into something, so. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, and we got to meet the creator. Of yep, and Hack he also Slash. bought me a statue a couple of years back for my birthday. Yeah. And I love it. You know, we got our, we got our book signed by him, too. He's, he's a super cool guy. Tim Seeley, in mm-hmm. case you guys didn't know. Uh, he's, he, he writes a lot of comics. He wrote Revival. He wrote Hack Slash. He did, he's doing Nightwing right now for DC. He's writing Nightwing. Um, that he, could be another show to put on, make into. Yeah, true. Yeah, Revival. there's there's a whole bunch of stuff. We could even do a part two to this podcast. But we'll probably do a part two because there's a lot more. Yeah, and it's since almost done. yeah, since we're running short on time. Um, yeah, but yeah, those are basically a couple of ideas we want. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we might do a part two to this, or maybe later on, not necessarily a part two next, but we could always do you know like oh our top movie you know movies or shows we want later or something like that. But yeah, that's basically a quick rundown of stuff we wanted. Um, you feel like you covered most of yours? I, I feel like yeah. I covered a little bit. I had a couple, I actually had like There's five a couple more, more. Yeah. but we'll do a part two for you guys. Cause he has off for work a couple of days and then my, you know, like we'll just do that stuff for you guys. Cause we late for lately we've been busy. So we're just happy to do podcasting again together with you guys. So yeah, it was good talk. Um, again, yeah. If you guys are trying to get a hold of us, yeah, we're on our Twitters. So, you know, at shaggy double N. And then at Animagus Queen, you can find us on there. Um, yeah, this is episode four of Parallel World Podcast. Thank you guys for watching. We will have episode five uploaded whenever, probably shortly. We'll yes. make you wait like, I know we took a little break, but <laughs> episode five will be up soon. So you can stay tuned for that. But And we'll try to get a little bit better, especially me at um, learning more how to do this. So um, thank you guys for listening um, with Shaggy Double on and Animagus Queen, and we'll see you guys on our next podcast. Yep, see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>